walls walls equality so it relates so let's say you know is sn say uh, let sn is equal to sum over i equals 1 to n xi okay so these are my sum total winnings until time time n where n is something deterministic walls equality uh, says what is your expected winning at your stopping time so you have decided to stop okay at some point as a stopping rule right so j is a stopping rule okay what is your expected total winning so sum of x1 plus x2 plus dot 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 till xj j is where you decided to stop but this j is now a function of it's potentially it's potentially a function of all these x the x's you've seen it's not a function of what is going to come right so you stopped based on some stopping rule what is the expected amount of winnings you have okay this uh, it relates to uh, your x bar which is the average of x expected value of x and the expected value of the stopping time stopping rule so it says that it says something very non surprising which says that it is equal to expected j times x bar okay okay and so i should say this properly right so let me call this some star okay theorem so this is for iid random variables x i okay let so the star is called walls equality let x n be a sequence of i i d random variables with finite mean x bar if j is a stopping time for x n with expectation of j finite then walls equality satisfied which means that this guy holds okay so walls equality star star is satisfied so the key conditions are that j should be a stopping rule for these extends and this is very important we will see expected j should be finite so not only am i saying that you should stop with probability 1 well if you don't don't even stop with probability 1 it's not even a stopping rule it's a defective stopping rule right so in addition to being a legitimate stopping rule meaning that you stop with probability 1 so j is finite with probability 1 in addition to that you need expected j to be finite okay expect if the expected j is infinite walls equality may not hold it's uh, necessary for this theorem to hold okay so i i, I hope you know that if a uh, random variable could be finite with probability 1 and the expected value still could be infinite that is not allowed here okay we we are asking for more than j just being a legitimate stopping rule all right this is, this is what the statement is okay uh, the proof we will uh, we will prove this of course i just want to remark that if this sort of a thing you have already seen when this j see if the number of sums you are the number of terms you are summing is a random variable some n which is independent of the x size then expected s n is equal to expected n times expected x this you have already seen in the basic probability right that you already know you can just take iterated expectations and prove it 
right. Here this is a, a similar thing holds also for stopping rules. Here what is the issue here that n or here the what we call j is not independent of the x n s is dependent on the x n s, but it is dependent in a stopping rule fashion all right. So, essentially it says that if you have a stopping uh, stopping rule your expected winning is simply <coughs> you are not you are not really beating the system right you are just saying that it is your average winning in each play times the expected number of plays. That is all is saying right x bar is your average winning in each play expected j is the number of plays. So, that is your total expected winning that is what this is saying. So, this is this would not be true for example, if you say that I am going to stop based on whether my next few returns are going to be bad or going to be good right then you can gain more or lose more depending on what you do <coughs> right then this kind of a relationship will not be true ok. So, before we prove uh, Wall's, Wall's equality let me give you some example one example let us say that uh, you have a biased coin tossing or a biased random walk. So, x i is equal to plus 1 with probability p and minus 1 with probability 1 minus p and you are looking at the stopping rule is this stop when s j equals plus 1 for the first time ok. So, here is a gambler ok who uh, who could win with probability p 1 rupee or lose with probability 1 minus p 1 rupee ok and he is happy the first time he gains a rupee he is happy ok he will stop the first time he gains a rupee. So, he could stop in the first trial itself if x 1 turns out to be plus 1 he will happily go back all right and if I have s, the s 1 turns out to be minus 1 then I hope that I will build up to 0 and then go to plus 1 and then I will stop ok. So, this is the stopping rule the moment I I am ahead. So, this is called stop when ahead yeah good question. So, the question is is this even a legitimate stopping rule ok well it is a it is it satisfies the stopping rule condition that you do not look ahead right you look at all your x i's if the sum of your x i's so far is plus 1 the first time you get to plus 1 you stop right. So, you are not looking ahead that much is clear, but is it finite with probability 1 that is not clear right it could be defective. So, this stopping rule could be potentially defective right. Okay, so expectation of what will be finite? Uh, SJ. Expectation of SJ may be finite. See, see, SJ is plus one, right? Whenever you stop, SJ is plus one. I don't know that, right? J is a geometric random variable. Uh, it's not, right? J is not. It's not so simple. It's not. Uh, see, you're not waiting for the first success. See, I think what the question is saying that is j simply your geometric random variable where you are waiting for the first plus 1. I am not waiting for the first plus 1, I am waiting for my first gain of 1 rupee. See there is no use if I lose 2 rupees and gain a rupee I do not stop. I should be ahead by 1 rupee I start with 0 let us say I do not have any money uh, the moment I gain 1 rupee I will leave right I can borrow let us say I do not have any money. Okay, if I lose money, I lose money. It's just a, it's not like you're actually paying. Okay, clear? So it's not a geometric random variable, not at all. So it's much more complicated. So the way, so I mean, okay, you can look at this. You can easily analyze this using a Markov chain, but we've not done Markov chains. Okay, so we will use a trick. We'll use something, uh, some rec recursive trick here. Okay, so of course, <coughs> let's say I denote by theta. Uh, 
the probability uh, so let me actually first let me argue this out more intuitively see I stop see if I stop if my first x i is 1 I win 1 rupee I am out right. So, if theta is the probability that I stop eventually okay, probability that we stop eventually I, 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 I guess so then theta is simply the probability that j is fi finite right. So, if theta is equal to 1 it is a stopping rule if theta is something less than 1 it is not a stopping rule it is a defective stopping rule correct. So, let me argue this out it will turn out that we will see how this theta behaves this theta is the probability that we stop eventually right. So, using the total probability rule I can write the probability that I stop eventually as the probability that I stop in the first right first trial itself right. So, what is the probability that I stop in the first trial given that I got plus 1? No, the probability that I stop in the first trial given that I got plus 1 is 1 times the probability of getting a plus 1. So, that will be p okay. plus probability that I stop eventually given that I stop got minus 1 then probability that I got minus 1 which is simply got it. So, theta is the probability that I stop eventually. So, I am splitting this into two disjoint event I stop. So, x 1 x 1 has to be plus 1 or minus 1 given that is x 1 is 1 I stop eventually x 1 is minus 1 what is the probability that I stop eventually I write like this ok. So, it is like this right. So, if you you can we look at this as a random walk. So, if this is 0 if I hit plus 1 I stop right finished. So, this has probability p if I get a minus 1 with probability 1 minus p then I have to from minus 1 I have to eventually find my way to plus 1 see I do not have to go I can go like that or I can do I mean I can do lot of things now right. So, basically I have to go eventually from minus 1 to 0 and then go from 0 to 1 right. So, minus 1 to 0 I may go like I may not go like this I may do right then I may go, go like that right many of these all these are possible. Once I get to 0 again I have to get to plus 1 see but the key issue here is because these x i's are i i d the probability of going eventually from minus 1 to 0 is the same as eventually going from 0 to 1. See if you look at if you eventually go like this from minus 1 to 0 those exact sample paths will also go from 0 to 1 if you start at 1 correct and once you reach 0 again you have to eventually get to 1. So, my point is that whatever happens here and whatever happens here are basically statistically identical going from minus 1 to 0 and 0 to 1 are statistically identical because of the IID nature of the this this uh, random variables. So, bottom line is that probability that you stop eventually given you ended up negative is like going from minus 1 to 0 and then going from 0 to 1 and the probability of that. So, what is the probability of eventually going from 0 to 1? It is the original probability right is theta right probability of eventually going from 0 to 1 is theta. So, similarly the probability of eventually going from minus 1 to 0 is also theta right. So, I can write this probability of going from minus 1 to 0 is equal to probability of eventually going from 0 to plus 1 right. This you will agree it does not matter where I start right you just have to take one step and that is your theta. So, for 
probability of stopping eventually given that you, stop, you start at minus 1, the probability that you eventually get end up at plus 1 is simply theta times theta, right. So, I can write theta is equal to p plus theta square times 1 minus p, okay. And because they are independent, you go from minus 1 to 0 and then independently go from 0 to 1 and these are the same probability, okay. You solve this, what do you get? So this implies theta equal to, see theta is equal to 1 is clearly a solution, it is a quadratic in theta, right. Theta equal to 1 is clearly a solution and theta equal to uh, p over 1 minus p is another solution, right. Okay, so, the question is why is the probability of stopping eventually given x 1 equal to minus 1. So, if x 1 is minus 1, I am at minus 1, right. I want to go from minus 1 to 1 eventually. In order to go from minus 1 to 1, I should eventually go from minus 1 to 0 and then eventually go from 0 to 1, correct. Probability of eventually going from 0 to 1 is my original theta and because of the IID nature, probability of going from minus 1 to 0 is also statistically the same, it is theta right and these are independent. So, I multiply, okay. So, what is the issue here? So, if p is equal to half, then theta equal to 1 is the only solution, right. So, if p is equal to half, so the cases are as follows. So, theta, so if p equal to half, then theta equal to 1 is the only solution, right. So, j is a stopping rule. If p is greater than half, then what happens? Theta equal to 1 is the only solution, okay. So, then j is a stopping rule, all right. Because p greater than half, uh, the second solution is not even a probability, right. You can just throw it away, correct. So, if p less than half, we seem to have two solutions which are valid probabilities 1 and p over, p over 1 minus p. So, if p is like one third, then p by 1 minus p will be half, right. So, the question is then is theta equal to 1 correct or theta equal to p over 1 minus p correct, right. It turns out this requires some Markov chains that this is the correct solution. If p is less than half, then we can show that theta equal to p over 1 minus p is the correct solution, okay. Uh, wait for this, okay. We will, we can show this, we can use birth date Markov chains to show this. Then j is defective, okay, all right. So, you stop only with probability p by 1 minus p if p is less than half. There is a positive probability that you do not stop, okay. Now, uh, we are almost out of time, but we can use Wald if we can est establish what is expectation of j, is it finite or infinite, then uh, we can go ahead and use Wald, okay. So, we will continue this uh, next class. Next class, we will also prove Wald's theorem, Wald's equality, okay. Thank you. So, we will continue this tomorrow.